got to the airport and then couldn't find the rental company. Spoke to a policeman who didn't speak any English. But he didn't pull his gun out. But he didn't pull his gun out, so it couldn't look that bad. Ran the rental company and they uh, WhatsApped us. So we got to there. And they dropped us at the airport, went through customs, everything was all good, had to get scanned. I think my necklace showed up actually. And yeah, took a flight, AGM was pretty good, although we couldn't hook up to their free entertainment system, so I'd like to have a look at that. Went through customs, all good. And when we went through the uh, declaration line, we were standing there trying to figure out what we wanted to declare, and the guy turned and said, just come through, come through. So we came through, and here we are wandering through the airport looking for the rental car company. In fact, there they are right there. So there we are. <coughs> Didn't declare anything through Athens either, so... Right, anyway. Get our rental car, com uh, rental car and hit the road. Right, problem number one. I got on the wrong side. On the left hand side. Problem number two is a hybrid, <laughs> which I've never driven before. So um, starting it was, hmm, took a few, well, it took a minute to try and figure out how to start it. And yes, she's quite flash, but uh, probably a bit too flash. Um, oh well, I'm sure after a few days I'll get used to it. Um, hmm, okay, cool. Hopefully it comes with an English instruction manual. I'll do the blog and um, Mel will put all the luggage in. Yeah. Right, better go around the car, make sure we've got all the uh, scratches and dents all marked for it and hope we don't put any more in. Right. Off north. <coughs> well, we've actually been driving for a wee while now. Um, first impressions of uh, well, this car for a start off, it's actually not too bad. It's got a bit of pickup, so when you want a bit of guts, you put the foot down and throws it into power and engine and gives you the power, so it's all good. Um, a lot better, well, I actually think the road's better, and um, the drivers are actually better as well. There's not so many crazy turks on the road. Everybody indicates and people get into the right lane and they don't speed past you. That's what we found yesterday. Lots of people, we were doing like 120, which was the speed limit, and people going past us at 160, 180. But no, lots of, lots of traffic speed signs, so you know what you're actually supposed to be doing at each uh, at each point, which was really confusing in Turkey, to be fair. Um, and it stops your wife shrieking at you from this passenger seat. Yes, it does. It stops the wife panicking for no reason. Um, yeah, so it's all good, apart from a little bit of rain, it's it's drizzling a wee bit, but uh, no, so the roads are good, drivers are good, traffic's alright, there's actually not much traffic on the road, um, either a six lane or a four lane road as we're going along, um, and then again we're paying, we've paid three tolls so far, each one three, $3.80 euro, so yeah. Times 1.6. Times 1.6, which is into New Zealand dollars, so yeah. So anyway, so I guess that's what it is. Yeah, about five bucks each, I suppose, um, to maintain the road and pay for it. So yeah, anyway, make a good time, so we'll keep trucking along and uh, hopefully the traffic stays like this. Market shopping Greece style. Right. So just like Turkey, you've actually got to pay for the trolleys to unlock them. So um, there's no baskets or anything. So probably should need get a trolley, shouldn't we? Yeah. Yes. Right. Very good. Anyway, 
We are grease shopping. I think Mel's going to wander around and pay for the uh, trolley. Anyway, we've got something through bookings.com. Well, we haven't actually. We found it through bookings.com and just turned up and they're giving it to us cheap. So that's 50 euros. We're going to pay for the night for that, which is pretty good. Um, she's a bit cold and windy out there, even though she's at the beach. So but anyway, we're here. We'll get a basket or a trolley or something and do some shopping and uh, get into it. Thin. One, two. One, two. Thin. Choppy. Other Greek things like Greek tomatoes and Greek spinach, yeah, and Greek wraps, and Greek wraps. <laughs> yep. It's about nine degrees outside and about 38 knot winds. I think we're going to have a rather bumpy ferry ride tomorrow. Mel's looking forward to it. I think that might be the ferry that we're going to end up taking tomorrow. Got the tickets for it. We know what time we need to turn up, so it's all good. Not the biggest ferry I've ever seen. Ready to take this ferry. Oh. See, it there looks pretty calm, but we're sort of in a bit of a bay, um, which we'll need to travel through first before um, before we get out into the open open sea. So, looking at uh, at Windfinder, which is what I use for my wind and a lot of my weather reporting and bits and pieces, says that there's only sort of one or two metre swells out there. There's only sort of half metre swells in the bay here. So yeah, so anyway, so um, taking some seasick pills just in case. Um, trouble with those is they make me a bit drowsy. Um, Piha bombs is what they are. And I've used them before and they've been excellent. As I said, they just make me a bit drowsy. But um, yeah, boats and I don't really agree. Uh, which is why when you're on holiday you go and take a ferry. So. Anyway, this is what we're doing here. It's a beautiful, gorgeous day, as you can see in behind me. So, yeah. Let's have a look here and see if we can focus in on that. There we go. Nice. Awesome. So, yeah, so we're going to be down, we're going to be down there. We, we got the tickets yesterday. Went down to check out the place. So, put some petrol on the car. Um, checked out the ferry terminal. While we're down there, we managed to get our tickets. So, they've been prepaid, but we actually got the tickets. Um, and then the ferry came in as well, so we're well and truly organised for what we need to do. So it only takes about five or ten minutes to get down there. Um, and then we'll get over, uh, well, it doesn't leave till eight. So breeze feels like it's just picking up a wee bit over here. It's a wee bit more exposed over this side. Um, we're a bit further south from Volos uh, Township. And it was a bit where it was windy here, it wasn't so windy. In at the ferry terminal so anyway it'll be what it will be we were just worried that it wasn't going to sail because of all the big gum um, winds and bits and pieces and stuff that was happening so I think she'll sail yeah she should sail it'll be all good right anyway load the car better get her on our way take some footage from the boat
right, here we are, we're on the ferry. Nice and easy. I said to Mel, I said we must, uh, I must look Greek. So I was driving up the ramp and the man was talking to me and I sort of was signalling to him, do I need to go up or down the ramp? Because there was two options, he was sort of signalling and then I ran down the window and he was talking to me in Greek and indicating where I needed to go and I actually said to him out the window, I said, oh, do you want me to park in front of the white car? He was like, oh, English, he said, why did you not tell me? <laughs> so, yes, I must not Greek. Anyway, that's a bit bright back there, but uh, there we go. Cool, so anyway, so we're off. And she's as calm as a mill pond in here, although it looks like there's a bit of a, I don't know what they call it, a spit or something around over there, which probably makes the harbour a bit calmer. I've seen them in other places around, uh, around, the, around the world and stuff, so yeah. Anyway, we'll soon find out. You see that a little bit in places around the world. Vietnam was uh, big for it. You can't actually put the toilet paper into the toilet because it, the system can't handle it. So you've actually got to put it into a rubbish bin down there. So you wipe your backside, put it into the bin, which is a bit of a foreign concept, but it's because their sewage system can't uh, can't handle the toilet paper. Just uh, what you put in the toilet first. Right, the stock get unloaded at First Island. Half an hour or so to go to the next one, where we'll get off. Give them some time. Slept for probably half of that. Be good, um, good to get onto some solid land again, which is quite windy as you can see from the other video. And a bit cold. Quick bite to eat before we hit the road for 45 minutes. spoon so we had to use it into the bread to scoop the seasoning out. Yeah, the apartment where we were staying is really good. Um, and the person he met us on the street and he said, Mr. Spencer, I've been waiting for you. So he let us in and, and the apartment's really nice actually. But we're just looking for somewhere to um, eat. There seems to be plenty of cars around the place, but everything's all shut up. Admittedly, it's freezing cold and there doesn't seem to be too many tourists around. Um, so it might have something to do with it. Um, quarter to six on a Friday. But we might be working on uh, island time. Or well, they may open, but later on, I don't know. So uh, anyway, we found a supermarket. One supermarket was closed. Service stations were closed. Um, I found another supermarket. So we're going to pick up some bits and pieces in here. And I guess we will look at um, maybe getting some food here and eating it back at the flat or at the apartment. Or hopefully there's, uh, there's something open. Yeah, there's a takeaway place down the down the uh, road there, and they sell cheese pies, which seems to be a Greek um, delicacy, uh, mostly feta, I think, sort of wrapped in a pastry thing. So anyway, we'll go into the supermarket and have a look and see what we can find. <laughs> 